What's going on guys, no guides here, welcome back to another video tutorial. In today's video I'm going to explain to you in detail and show you in depth how to use the 4231 and how to also optionally convert it into a 3151 when you're attacking. 4231 arguably is the most stable formation and the most effective formation to give you wins, especially post patch after some formations are not really as effective now with the comeback on defense nerf. The tactics and instructions that I made makes it easier to defend because you defend very compactly and you, you kind of centralize your team. During the transition to the attack, you become like a 4-4-1-1 and that allows you to easily build up. But then when you're in a final third, it converts into a four diamond striker or four striker formation. So it is also very effective. As I previously mentioned, I devised a special tactic which converts the 4-2-3-1 into a 3-1-5-1 on the fly. So just by a press of a single button on your controller, you can trick your opponent and almost outnumber your opponent and shock your opponent by converting it into a 3-1-5-1. creates a lot of confusion, it's really good for the attack and your opponent doesn't know what's coming. But without further ado, let's get straight into the 4-2-3-1 first and then I'll explain how it converts into a 3-1-5-1 after you understand the tactics and instructions. Before we get into the instruction and tactics, I need to explain to you the layout of the formation, how it all works. Now the 4 2 3, 1 the reason why it's the most stable is because you're both stable, both attacking and defensively. When you're defending, you pack out the center of the pitch. The 4 2 3, 1 is quite a narrow formation. Your cam is positioned in such a way where he helps out defensively and you can always change to him manually, but he's positioned in such a way where he still occupies the attack. Now the left attacking mid and the right attacking mid, they also come back on offense. So what they do is they kind of drop back, they come back on offense and they help solidify the wing areas. Now wide formations are ever more prominent this year and I think the 4 3 one especially against those formations where the left attacking mid and right attacking mid coming back on defense, you do help defensively and you're more stable so you don't get doubled up. Of course you do have the two CDMs providing stability in midfield and with the cam dropping inside, you almost have superiority in midfield to help defensively. But when you transition to attack, it's almost like a 4 4 one, one. Now the cam who's on stay forward, he acts as the link up player. So this is how it turns into like a 4 4 one, one when you're kind of building up your left attacking mid, your right attacking mid, they dart forward. Um, they're very good for counter attack type runs to exploit the wing areas. And what happens, it then turns into a four striker formation, almost like a wide diamond. So your left attacking mid and right attacking mid, they fly forward and so does your cam and so does your striker. So it ends up becoming a wide diamond in some respect. You have your striker, the left attacking mid, the right attacking mid end up becoming like wingers. And then your cams on stay forward ends up becoming like a center forward or a second striker. So very good for the quick one twos. Now if you think about it, if you're in behind your opponent's CDM, you basically have a four striker formation up against your opponent's four defenders. The reason why the 4 2 run is also so effective is you can choose where do you want to play ticky tackle or you want to play down the wing. You want to play centralized or down the wing, it's completely up to you. Just because the way the players are laid out, you can go either centrally or you can go down the wing. It's very versatile. The striker and the three cams are linked up in such a way that they're very good for close ticky tackle formations, but it's also very effective for wide formation. In a 4 2 one you do have a while I like to call the butterfly wings or the wide triangles. It's a link up play between the wide cams, the CDMs and the fullbacks. A quick one-two between these two players can help you get in behind. Don't forget, a lot of players are very weak down the wing. They don't really track the cams, the wide cams making runs in behind. That's why it's very effective with this formation, the link-up play, especially on the counter-attack. So as I mentioned, you defend in a 4-2-3-1, very narrow, very compact. Transition to attack is basically a 4-4-1-1, good for the build-up play, and then it becomes a four-striker wide diamond formation. Now this is very effective formation as it is, but I've also created the optional tactic of converting into a 3-1-5-1. With this tactic, big because it's so reactive and it happens instantaneously. As soon as you press and activate the tactic, it immediately converts into a 3-1-5-1 and your opponent literally can't defend against it. He gets outnumbered in midfield, he gets outnumbered in attack. He's got so many players swarming forward towards him, it creates so much confusion. Almost nine times out of 10, he can't even defend against it. And the best thing is you can turn this on whenever you want. So you can turn it on in the 70 minutes or from the first minute, it can be turned on whenever you want. Okay, now I'm going to go over the tactics and instructions incrementally because I know a lot of you guys want to know the reasonings why and my kind of my thought process. So defensive style, I've gone with drop back. To be honest, this one you can choose between balanced or drop back. If you're not that good defensively and you're used to using drop back, I'd recommend using drop back. Uh, I think this formation works very well with drop back and I think those are not comfortable with defending. I think it's a very stable formation to even close out the game. As I said, this is a formation you can use for all times, in all times of the game, should I say. A width, I've gone with a width of six. Um, the sole reason is I just kind of want my left tech in mid and my right tech in mid to occupy the wider areas. I think against the 4-4-2s four, four, and uh, you know, the 4 two, three, one second variations, the wider formations, I think defensively you just, you're just a bit more stable as can the wide camps occupy those areas. You're already stable with this formation in the middle. You have the two CDMs and you have the cams coming back and you have the center cam coming back as well. So you 
kind of already stable in the middle. So that's why I kind of increased the width a bit. And I think also when you do win the ball back, you kind of have some passing options available before you transition to an attacking width. Uh, the depth I've gone with four. This is the kind of a tactical decision. Uh, the reason why is my striker and my cam, uh, they are all, they're basically on an advanced forward position, especially my cams on stay forward. But with the depth of four, they're not, they're basically still in the game defensively. So they're basically still occupying the midfield to kind of break down the attack. But also they're not too far forward. So when I do win the ball back, I can distribute the ball for my CDMs to my two strikers, you can say, or my cam, my single striker. That's why I go with the depth of four. Now, offensive style, I've gone with long ball. Uh, to be honest, I just think it's really important, especially with the 4 2 3 1. Uh, for those that don't know, four instructions for the 4 2 3 1, especially the three cams, can't issue them an instruction or assign them instructions option to get in behind so what long ball does is basically you can argue to get in behind tactic so it's asking players to make runs in behind so when you do have the ball with your cdm your cams will try to make runs in behind so i think it's very effective especially with a 4-2-3-1 in contrast i wouldn't use fast build up play just for the simple reason using drop back as well and i think obviously you know progressing from a drop back to a fast build up play there's issues with stamina there and players are running back and forth but also on a more important note, I think obviously if you lose the ball, especially during the counter attack, and you could be ex easily exploited, especially if your players are running too far forward. So that's why I've gone with long ball. Now with attacking width, I've gone with attacking width of four. Uh, the reasoning why is, although the wide cams, although they appear to be narrow on paper, they're actually quite wide. As I said, it's kind of like a wide diamond when you're attacking. I've just kind of reduced the width just a little bit, just because I want them to be a bit more centralized, kind of near the penalty arc, if that makes sense. I kind of want them to be positioned in this area over here, not too far away and not too on the wings. And this kind of ties into when I, when this formation changes into an th optional 3 one, five, one. Um, There's a reason why the depth's on four, but I'll explain that later on. With players in the box, I've gone with six. To be honest, you can reduce this if you want to. Um, I just think six is a good balance when you do get into a crossing situation um, because you're playing a 4 2 3 1. Of course, you have the, the two CDMs outside the box anyway uh, for support because they're on stay back while attack. I'll get onto that in a second. But you, if you do increase it, there is obviously a chance that sometimes you're too many players to commit too forward. So I think six kind of gives you the appropriate balance. And for the corners and free kicks, you can change it to however you deem is appropriate. However, what I would say is just do bear in mind as usual if you commit this too high you know you're going to be susceptible to the counter attack so just do bear that in mind i'm going to go over to the instructions now um we've gone over the tactics now you understand the base core of how the team kind of works i'm going to go over the instructions now this is what makes and breaks the formation we're going to start with the striker have him on stay central and come back on the fence the reason he's on stay central is i just think you kind of want the link up play between the striker and a cam and you always want this player to be centralized so that's why i have him on stay central i don't have him on getting behind because you have the long ball tactic already on and i think especially against park the bus formations uh sometimes you kind of don't want your players to always be running making to look a running behind sometimes you want us to sit like as a target man sometimes depending on situation so i left this person on balance i do have him come back on the fence do not worry he doesn't really come back on the fence and um, obviously after the patch strikers don't come back on defense anymore what this means is that he's just positioned a bit more naturally in a more reserved position so he's not too far forward he's just before the halfway line that's why he's on comeback and defense and the reason why he's on comeback and defense as well let's say for example a camp uh, your right attacking mid let's say he goes all the way forward and he's out of position then for example your striker can come back and drop back and kind of fill that void now moving on uh, to the center camp, the central camp is on stay forward. Now this is what's integral, the central camp is on stay forward. So he's gonna act like a center forward most of the time. This is kind of what makes it become a 4-4-1-1 uh, when you're building up because this player is just behind your striker. He's obviously a link up player. A very good player like Neymar will obviously be very efficient and will probably be the best, be prolific in this role. So that's why the cam's on stay forward. Now going for the wide cams, you have both of them on comeback on offense. As I said, uh, the reason why is you want to get doubled up against 4 4 2. So they, I want them to come back defensively, just so they're a bit more stable. So defensively, they'll come back and they'll help. But this also means when they're attacking, they're going to be running from deep positions. So this is really good and integral when you're going up against your opponents, so especially on a counter attack. So when you do get the ball, you can always look to make these pass to these players that are running from deep into a striking position. Now moving over to my two CDMs, um, for both CDMs you both have them on cover, cut passing lanes and cover centre. Obviously you want them to cover the centre, you don't need to put them on, the biggest mistake I see people see is cover the wing. Because your left tackle mid and right tackle mid they're coming back on the fence so you don't need to actually cover the wing because they're going to cover the wing for you. Now I have them both on cover centre so obviously against the 4 one 2 one 2 4 3 one they kind of stay in a central position obviously defend the middle. Have them both on cut passing lanes I think is probably very effective this year. Um, one of the CDMs I have on stay back while attacking and one of them I have dropped between defenders so this kind of creates a situation where one CDM just sits a bit back and the other just a bit more forward. Um, I'll get more into this more later on but this kind of helps you build 
bring the ball from, I suppose you can say, the defensive defensive line to the attacking line. So they're not completing in line, they kind of like just separate apart. It's good for build up play. Now the left back and the right back, um, I have them both on stay back while attacking. So they're just going to stay put, they're never going to go forward. Um, but I do have the run types on overlap. Now overlap, don't forget, overlap doesn't mean they're going to run forward. It just means that if they do run forward, they're going to make overlapping runs. You can of course turn this inverted, but I wouldn't recommend that because that means they're going to run on the inside. And when they run on the inside, what happens is most of the time is that your wide cam gets pos positioned and pushed outwards. You don't really want that. You want your wide cam to be in the center and you want your left back to be overlapping. Because don't forget your wide cam is the person that can shoot. There's no point in having your full back on the inside and your wide cam pushed on the outside. Okay, this is the part you'll be waiting for. How does it convert into a 3-1-5-1? Now, it was really important that you understood what instructions I used and what tactics I used because everything goes hand in hand. The tactics, the instructions, and the deeper tactics all affect how the formation works. Now, just to clarify, I'm not referring to dynamic tactics. I'm referring to deeper tactics. Dynamic tactics are not being used. I don't change to another formation. I'm always staying on a 4-2-3-1 formation. So how does the formation change? It's a combination of the deeper tactics kind of pushing some players forward and then the instructions changing the way the players play. That's how it kind of converts into an immediate 3-1-5-1. So how does it happen? So this is how the 3-1-5-1 works. So both your fullbacks, they both advance forward. Now the question you're probably going to say to me, hang on, aren't both the fullbacks on stay back while attacking? Well, that's the caveat number one. Number one is deep pad tactics, they always override and they always overwrite whatever the instructions on the players are. How do the fullbacks join the attack? It's by using the fullbacks join the attack deep pad tactic. You press up on your D-pad and you bring up this attacking tactics menu. We're then going to focus in on the fullbacks during the attack and as soon as you turn it on a green light appears. So here for example in the clip you can see I have the ball in midfield, I activate my d-pad tactics, I then press up and I press left and I click on fullbacks during the attack. As you can see now my fullbacks are now starting to fly forward. You see that how it happens instantaneously? As soon as I press it, it happens immediately. You see that? And now I'm going to show another clip now. I'm in the same position, but I'm actually going to turn it off now. Now you see how my fullbacks now they come back to defend? So this is controlled manually. You as the user have control of when you want your players to go forward and when you want them to go backward. So now you, so now you understand, for example, why I have the fullbacks on stay back while attacking. Now you understand they go forward. And remember, as I said, as I mentioned earlier, they overlap. I don't have them on inverted. I want them to go down the wing. So they're the ones that go forward. They create a second line of attack. They give the support width, you can say. And that's what creates the five man midfield. So the next part is, so how does it become a back three? Now going back to the Suzuka, right? In this case, right? If you remember, I had one of the CDMs, only one of the CDMs on drop between defenders. So what happens is Suzuka in this case, he ends up dropping in between the two center backs. So this is what makes the back three. And don't forget, because there's no deeper tactics kind of instructing Suzoka where to go, he normally ad is adheres to the instructions. But because the four backs on stay back while attacking and you're having a deep attack that's overriding, overriding that control, they are then gonna go forward. So, so how it looks in game is the four backs then go forward, the CDM does drop, then drops in between the center backs. So you can argue the center back, the CDM, another center back make the back three. De Jong stays put and he kind of becomes a CDM center mid. Then you have, I suppose you can say the combination of the three cams and your four backs, which makes the midfield five. And then you have the singular striker, hence the 3-1-5-1. It's almost like a watered down 2-7-2 of Thiago Motta's formation. Now what you need to understand is if, for example, you leave the D-pad tactic on fullbacks during the attack, they're going to keep drawing the attack until you lose the ball. When you lose the ball, it still comes back and defends into a 4-2-3-1. It's only when you're attacking, they fly forward. So let's say this is the point of this formation. So let's say, for example, in the game, you're down 2-1 and you need to score a goal. Then you would activate the deep air tactics for backs during the attack to give you the 3-1-5-1 effect. But when you still lose the ball, they still come back and defend. And that's why I also have Mbappe on comeback and defense. So Mbappe, if a player is caught out of position, Mbappe still comes back and defense. So he kind of covers for someone else. So it's very intricate how it works. It took me a very long time to devise this. And that's why it's very complicated for you to understand. What I may have to do is I may have to do a follow-up video on how it works, but here you can see, for example, a clip um, I'm playing normally, and the trick my opponent activate the D-pad tactic, the fullbacks fly forward, he doesn't know what's coming, Suzuka then drops into a defensive role, and then I'm ready for the attack. As you can see, I have so many attacking options. I have Mbappe as my core main striker. I kind of have my Cam as a center forward. Then I have my Lamb and my Ram kind of on the on the wide areas. And then I have my left back and right backs providing width and distracting the defenders. I then have De Jong in the middle who's you can argue controlling the midfield, a singular CDM, and then I have three at the back. 
So that's how it converts from a 4-2-3-1 into a 3-1-5-1. Now, in terms of the team, you probably saw this team and you're thinking this is probably the most unorthodox team you've ever seen in your life. And the reason why is I like to have fun. So I'm going to explain to you what players you can use because I know if you're watching at this part of the video, you're actually really interested in using the formation and you want to see what players I'm using. I'm actually using wingers in that position. Now, the only person I have is Kandreva. Kandreva gets subbed off for Martinez um, in the first minute. The only reason why Kandreva is on is just for chemistry purposes, obviously. So that's, only, that's the reason why Politino gets full chemistry is because Kandreva's on. So what it is, is that I start on a 3-4-3. In game, I then change to a 4 2 3 one and what happens is that my main striker, now for your striker you can choose any player. I would say a marksman striker is good, someone that's good at dribbling. Remember this is going to be your clinical player. This guy's always going to be on the forward position. This guy's always going to be attacking. So you want a clinical striker like Mbappe, like Ronaldo, etc, etc. Now moving to the camp. Now the central camp is on state forward most of the time. Someone like Neymar is very effective. You kind of want a player that's a good build up player. Someone like Neymar, someone like Messi. They're going to be on stay four most of the time. But because you have a depth of four, they're still going to be positioned in a way where they can still help defensively and they can still help with their counter attack. So this player, you can get someone like Messi or someone like Benyeda. They're very effective in this position. Now for the Lamb and the Ram, what you want here is pace players. Now I know these are cams, but you can't have someone, for example, like De Bruyne. Someone like De Bruyne is too slow. Remember, these guys are going to be running back and forward. Remember, Dembele and Kandreva in this instance, right? They're both on comeback on offense, right? So they're going to run back and forth. You need someone who's got good stamina or decent stamina, and it's got a very good pace. These players act more as wingers than cams. That's why someone like De Bruyne, someone like Ericsson is not really good. You want high paced players in this position. Remember, even if it doesn't convert into a 3-1-5-1, they're still going to act as left wingers and right wingers. That's just the way the 4 2 3 one works. The cam is then a second striker, so you still want at least somewhat fast players. If you can get strikers or wingers in this position, that's what would be ideal. Now for, now for the CDM. Now, as I said, one of the CDMs drops in between the defenders. So one of the CDMs is going to become a centre-back. So someone like Kante, someone like Allen... Someone who's a defensive player in DD, some of these players that are defensive that can play in CDM and also play in centre back are a very good choice. In this case, I have Sizoko. The reason why I use Sizoko, because if we just go and look at his stats right now, so as you can see, I've got a shadow on Sizoko. As you can see, he's got decent pace. I wouldn't recommend someone that lower than 75 pace. I have a shadow on the player, and as I see, as you can see, even if he does play in a centre back role, he's got the stand tackling, he's got the slide tackling, so he can play in that position. So that's why I have Sizoko as a CDM that drops in between the defenders. Now the second centre mid, this is the person that's going to stay forward. Remember how I said, for example, one of the CDMs drops in between? This centre mid that's going to stay forward. Now ideally you want someone who's box to box here. You can have someone defensively. I have De Jong, he works quite well. But you can have Allen here, you can have De Jong here. You can have someone like Fabinho here. You can even have someone like Firmino. The key is this person has to be good on the ball. They can distribute the ball, they can pass the ball. Because don't forget, when your player's going to be running forward, sometimes there might not be a close passing option available. So this is the person who's going to make a through ball either to the wings or pass to one of the strikers. So you want a good passer here. So now, now going to the centre backs. Now, as you can probably see, I use unorthodox four backs and centre backs. Now, I think this is the meta this year. I, sh I truly do so. I use a full back centre backs on all my account. Now, even a full back on seven chemistry. Now, let me, now, let's, now I know p many of you guys are going to be like, what? Let me ask you a question. Would you rather have Cancelo on seven chemistry or would you rather have someone like Gomez, Joe Gomez, on 10 chemistry? I guarantee you, if you think about it properly, you'd rather have Cancelo on 7 chemistry. Look at his stats. The key is here is that he can distribute the ball. Just look at it. He's got very good passing and he's got good dribbling. Now, when you're playing attacking in a 3-1-5-1, these players can control the ball from midfield. Kind of how like Pep Guardiola has his fullbacks in, in a sense, an attacking role. So that's why it's very important to have good fullbacks and centre-backs. You can, of course, go with centre-backs if you really want to. But I've gone with four backs. I just like the fact that they have good pace, they can recover, and they've got good agility and balance. I think it's really important for four backs this year. Now, for the left back and right back, now you can play traditional, as I said, you can play traditional centre backs and you can play traditional four backs. The problem is when you convert to a 3 1 5 1, when these players go forward, they're going to now basically play as wingers. So I choose to play wingers and full backs just because it's a bit of fun, but you can choose anyone you want. The reason why I think wingers and full backs again, because Adama Traore is going to fly forward and so is Martial. So I kind of want them to be wide wingers and that's why I have wingers in that position. So, th so that's the way I play it. Now, for me, I play the 4-2-3-1 normally in game. And let's say, for example, I use this for the entire game, but let's say, for example, I'm struggling against an opponent. Maybe I'm 2-1 down. Then I switch to the 3-1-5-1 tactic. You see what I'm saying? And I use it intermittently. I use it 
intricately. So I might use it for a couple of minutes in game to surprise my opponent, then I'll turn it off. You see what I'm saying? Now, in terms of the work rates, the work rates don't mean anything. Don't forget, the striker, the work rate is not that important. Even though he's on comeback and defense, because of the way the patch works, he's still going to be on stay forward. The game is going to push him to stay on forward. The cam, again, work rates don't matter because the cam's on stay forward. So it doesn't matter if it's got high, low, or low, high, it's always going to be on stay forward. The same thing happens for both the, the lamb and the ram. Now, the lamb and the ram both have come back on the fence for their instructions. Now, this is the big misconception. It doesn't matter if they've got medium, medium, high, low, low, high, whatever. They're still going to come back on the fence and they're still going to go forward and attack. So it doesn't matter what the lamb and the ram work rates are either. The CDMs, same thing. Both CDMs have instructions. De Jong's always going to stay back, and when he converts into a 3 1 5 1, he's going to play the center mid. So it doesn't matter about his work rates either. The same with Sizoko. Sizoko, even if his work rates are high or low, he's always going to drop in between the defenders. One thing I would say to you is if, for example, you're finding that sometimes like, your CDM is not marking the run, or sometimes he's dropping a bit too far out of his position, you can turn this into man mark. So that way, when your opponent does run in behind, he will kind of throw the striker through. So if you are having problems defensively when you convert into a 3 1 5 1, and you find that sometimes that Sizoko just pushed a bit like in front of the two center backs, you can put this on man mark, which helps with the recovery. But I prefer cut passing lanes. Again, with the fullbacks, the work rates they don't matter because the players are always going to be stay back while attacking. They're never going to advance forward. When you activate the D-pad tactics, you're pushing them forward manually. You see what I'm saying? The tactics are going to push them forward manually. So they're going to go forward regardless of their work rates. Again, so in this whole formation, work rates is not that important. It's honestly not that important. But anyway, guys, that's the formation. Um, if you do have any questions, I'm presuming a lot of you guys have a million questions. Of course, do let me know below. Uh, this tactic took me months to devise, and this video took me weeks to make. Uh, I think I've done it in the best possible way. If you want me to, I can fo make a follow-up video on how it plays, maybe uh, give you some more details about it. Just in case you're wondering as well, I am streaming all my foot champs games on Twitch. As usual, twitch.tv forward slash guides. Links in the description below. So of course, you can watch me play this formation in the weekend league. And of course, I started my Patreon as well. So you want to support me there. And of course, those who support me will get access to FIFA school as well. This is a little thank you on my side. All right, thank you very much for watching this video. As I said, if you do have any questions, please let me know down below. I know there's going to be some people that are still going to have some confusion. So I'll try to rectify them in my next follow-up video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace out, boys.